Here we are using an AC-DC clamp meter to measure the output current of the power circuit supply. A multimeter is being applied across the control resistors to confirm their values. Similarly, here we confirm the operating voltage of the Arduino using a multimeter. After reviewing the connections of the voltage and current sensors, a multimeter was used to ensure the measured values across both sensors did not exceed the maximum operating ranges of 25 volts and 30 amps. As you can see, a 2 amp fuse is located at each anode circuit branch while a 10 amp fuse is located at the main bus bar. For positive, we used red, black for negative, blue for reference, green or yellow for earth and brown for the control. After the LCD screen connections were verified and successfully connected to the Arduino, the screen displayed a connected message. A test character was sent from the Arduino to further witness its connectivity. All network connections have been achieved using the Ethernet shield. Test results were initially going to be viewed from InfluxDB, but we are now using Pandas. We can see the Arduino has successfully connected to the local network. To test the functionality of the software, we extracted readings from the voltage and current sensors which were stored into memory. The stored current and voltage values were then read from memory and displayed on the LCD screen in volts and amps. Here we can see the appropriate current and voltage values being displayed on the LCD. The correct voltage and current values are stored at intervals of 1 minute. This is a program which formats the results into a graph and sends it to the user. Here you can see the graphs have been received via email and they display the value of the current flowing through each branch, the potential difference of the asset from the reference electrode and whether cathodic protection is active or not. An aluminium casing is used as the enclosure for the circuit. Its high strength and durability ensure all the hardware is protected from various environmental factors at all times. The enclosure can be easily opened and closed and contains a lock to prevent unauthorised access. Suitable ventilation has also been provided to prevent overheating of the electrical components. A simple plastic container is used to house the salt water, steel and sand. In the final design, a segregator will be added to electrically isolate the system, one side showing the effects of a non-cathodically protected environment. Before protection, we received a reading of approximately negative 548 millivolts for the potential difference between the steel pile and the reference electrode. After protection, we received a reading of approximately minus 1.25 volts. Any value more negative than minus 800 millivolts was expected, therefore our system functions as desired. Additionally, the appropriate output current flow occurring from the anode circuit branch must be between 0.1 amps to 1 amp, which as you can see, we achieved.